Welcome back to another session of Understanding Human Anatomy. In this video, I'll begin a discussion of the perineum. Now the perineum is the floor of the pelvic cavity. Uh, it's covered by muscle, what we can think of as a diaphragm covering uh, the opening of the pelvic cavity to the outside. It's a muscular diaphragm that must be pierced by two or three openings depending on the gender. The urethra and the anus pierce the pelvic diaphragm in both genders and of course in females additionally the vagina must pierce through this opening. So this muscular opening is given the task of maintaining the integrity of the pelvic floor and keeping the pelvic viscera in our abdominal pelvic cavity while at the same time allowing for these openings and to a certain extent controlling these openings so that we gain voluntary control of both urination and defecation. Now to begin I want to sketch in some bony landmarks that will serve as our starting point. We'll start by drawing in some bony landmarks and we'll start with part of the Oz Coxy, the hip bone like so and we'll draw in the other side like this and of course we're going to have the fibrocartilaginous joint between the two pubic bones anteriorly the pubic symphysis and I need also to sketch in the very large foramen we see in the oscoxy, the obturator foramen. Let's sketch that in there. Now, what I want you to realize is that the obturator foramen is really covered with a membrane and it only has a very small opening to transmit the obturator artery vein and nerve. So let me color in the area of the membrane and I've left the small opening for the obturator artery vein and nerve. The membrane that covers the obturator foramen serves for muscle attachment primarily for the obturator externus and obturator internus muscles. Um, we need to put some labels here and I want to label the bones first of all and here we have the pubic bone And then we have down here the ischium the part of the ischium that's down here showing is the rounded area is the ischial tuberosity And the ischial tuberosity is what we 
sit on. Uh, some people call it the sits bone. We have the pubic symphysis. And that is the fibrocartilaginous joint that unites the left and right pubic bones in the midline. We have the rami of the pubic bone. We have the superior pubic ramus. And the superior pubic ramus is on the superior side of the obturator foramen. And then we have an inferior pubic ramus. And the inferior pubic ramus makes up part of the bone on the inferior side of the obturator foramen. But the inferior pubic ramus joins with or meets the ischial ramus part of the ischium and together this ramus on the inferior side of the obturator foramen is often referred to as the ischiopubic ramus. Now I have another bony landmark to draw in and that is the sacrum and coccyx and I'm going to represent the sacrum as essentially a triangle and we'll make the coccyx the tip of that triangle like so. So again adding the labels we have the sacrum and then we have the coccyx And remember that the sacrum is composed of five fused vertebrae and the coccyx is composed of three to five fused vertebrae um, in the adult. To complete the structure of the perineum we need to draw in a ligament. It's a ligament that runs from the ischial tuberosity down to the sacrum. And it is called the sacrotuberous ligament. So let me draw it in on each side. Let me draw a label here. There's our sacred tuberous ligament. Now this completes the skeletal landmarks for the perineum. And so we can talk about the boundaries of the perineum.
and we have the pubic symphysis anteriorly. Then we have the ischial pubic ramus. and the ischial tuberosity the sacrotuberous ligament and the sacrum and cossacks. And let me throw in a label here for the obturator for Amen. that I neglected a little er earlier. Okay. These are the structures that form the boundary of the perineum. Pubic symphysis, ischial pubic ramus, ischial tuberosity, sacred tubers, ligament and then the sacrum and cossacks and back on the other side sacrotuberous ligament, ischial tuberosity, ischial pubic ramus and pubic symphysis. So the perineum is roughly triangular in shape with the pubic symphysis, uh, sacrum and cossacks, two of the points of the triangle, the other two points of the triangle are the ischial tuberosities. Now I'm going to sketch in the openings and I'll sketch in the openings for a female perineum. So we'll start with a urethra and then the vagina and finally the anus. And again let me put the labels in here. The urethra. The vagina. And the anus. So this is the, the basic structure and boundaries of the perineum. Now, we can divide the perineum into two triangles. We're taking the diamond and dividing it into two triangles by drawing a line across the two ischial tuberosities. And this results in converting 
the diamond of the perineum into two triangles, a urogenital triangle, anteriorly and an anal triangle posteriorly Now, in the coming videos, I will start by describing the pelvic diaphragm, the muscle that covers the entire perineum and ensures the integrity of the perineum, preventing our viscera from herniating inferiorly out of the perineum. Uh, then I will discuss the structures more superficial to the diaphragm in the anal triangle because the anal triangle is common to both males and females. And then we'll go on to discuss the urogenital triangle uh, which will have to be described twice, once for the males and then secondly for the females. Now I want to point out that the view that I'm using for this diagram and for a number of the subsequent ones is a view from the lithotomy position. And the lithotomy position is the one where someone is on an examination table in a semi-reclining position, the knees bent, and the thighs rotated laterally uh, so that one can easily view the perineum. It's a position that's common when people are having a pelvic examination. So we'll continue in the next video. Thank you for your attention.